بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وموالاه Today inshallah before we start something uh, new we will go uh, through some more details about alamat al-i'rab the types of uh, grammatical analysis because we cannot make arab without using one of them and as i told you before all grammar is about them uh, being at the right position so it is uh, very important to understand them and uh, and the understanding them is always through definitions uh, because it is the door that's why scholars always define things in the linguistic side and the technical side before they start uh, the lesson. So the types of Arab which we mentioned before Al-Rafa wa Nasb Al-Khafd or Al-Jar they have two terms the fourth one is Al-Sukun Al-Jar or Al-Khafd is just different way of saying them for example the school of thought of al-Basriyun they call it al-Jar if a word has a kasra they call it majrur and the school thought of al-Kufiyun uh, they call it uh, makhfut they give it the term of khafd al-Basriyun refers to the scholars of al-Basra uh, which is a city in the southern of Iraq al-Kufiyun refers to uh, the scholars of al-Kufa which is a city in uh, south of Baghdad in Iraq these two names they will uh, they will they come all the time in when learning Nahu the reason because the scholars of these two cities they were um, uh, on the top of the Arabic language obviously at, the, at that time and then uh, the Muslim scholars after them they followed one of their uh, schools and used one of their uh, terms and sometimes you can find some scholar, scholars uh, they use both terms in, in, in the same book now uh, the definitions uh, of uh, these four we can go through them in details uh, we go again through definition of Arab uh, because as I told you, you need to be uh, familiar with it. Uh, it means the change of a, uh, of a vowel markings at the end of a, of a word according to grammatical uh, factor. Now the first type, which is Arrafa, means highness. And in the term of Nahu, it means uh, a change that occurs with a sign of Dhamma or its substitute due to a factor. As you know, a factor means... Uh, uh, the, the, what causes the change so there is a factor which causes the rafa, a factor which causes the nasb a rafa which causes the jar and causes the uh, al, al, al number two a nasb means uh, straightness and in the term of nahu it means a change that occurs with a sign of fatha or its uh, substitute due of factor al khafd it means lowered Al Jar it means to pull. They have the same uh, technical term in Nahu. They mean a change uh, that occurs with the sign of Kasra or its substitute due to a factor. The fourth one, which is called Al Jazm, uh, which means to cut, and in Nahu it means a change that occurs with the sign of uh, Sukun or its substitute due to a factor. So this is these are the types of Arab. Now the opposite of Arab is called Al Bina. Albina basically uh, a word that has a fixed ending. That's why it is the opposite of Arab. It has a fixed ending. So if Arab is a change of the last letter from Fatha to Dhamma to Kasra to Sukun, Bina is a fixed ending. That means that word it will always have uh, the vowel which it has. Fatha or Dhamma or Kasra, it will never change. No uh, factor can change it. The reason I mentioned uh, Bina because in the future we will, we will come across some words which has fixed ending. For example, all participles has a fixed ending. No factor can change uh, its ending. Um, inshallah, at the end of these lessons, when we uh, start the, the practice, to, to practice the rules on sentences, making Arab to sentences, I will, I will give you most of the words that have fixed ending to help you make Arab uh, correctly. Now, after knowing the signs, we need to know what is Al-Kalam. Kalam, which is the speech. Al-Kalam in the Arabic language has two meanings. One, its meaning in the Arabic language, uh, it can be defined as an uh, expression 
through which benefits is obtained, whether uh, the expression is, is verbalized or not, such as writing or gesture. For example, if someone asks you a question and he wants an answer from you by yes or no, if you write the answer yes or no, for, uh, for example, on a piece of paper, this is considered as a speech in the, Arabic language, in, the, in the Arabic language. And if you move your head up and down, which means yes, or it means yes, this is called a speech in Arabic as well. Because a benefit is obtained. But in the Nahu, the word Al-Kalam has to have four things in it. Al-Lafz, Al-Tarkib, Al-Ifada, Al-Wada. Al-Lafz, Al-Murakkab, Al-Mufud, Al-Wada. That's the definition of Al-Kalam in Arabic language. Al-Kalam, Al-Lafz, Al-Murakkab, Al-Mufud, Al-Wada. So the first one, Al-Lafz, means it must be an oral uh, sound made from letters of the Arabic language, which starts for the, with the letter Alif and ends with the letter Ya. Like Muhammad, Umar, Uthman, Ali, and so on. A tarkib means it must be composed of two words or more like Abu Bakr, uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, um, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and so on. Al-Ifada means that the listener is sufficed with uh, what he hears and does not require any more information from the speaker. Like, for example, if someone says to someone, if you go, and he stops. This sentence is not called a speech by the, the scholars of Nahu, because the listener is waiting for further clarification, which is what, what will happen if, if uh, he goes. The fourth one, uh, al-wada, uh, means uh, the word must be from the Arabic language which the Arab used to communicate with. So this means if the speech is not an oral sound that contains Arabic letters, is not composed of two words and up, uh, it doesn't suffice the listener, and is not made uh, up of the, the, the words which the Arab used to communicate with, it will not be called speech in the Arabic grammar. Now, the, the, the word al-kalam, speech, is made up of three types in uh, uh, Arabic. There is no fourth, just three. Ism, fi'l, and harf. Noun, verb, and uh, participle. The definition of <coughs> ism is a word that indicates a meaning uh, in of itself and which cannot be linked to uh, tense, meaning to time. So this means that every word which a person, animal, plant, or anything is, is named. In another word, Everything is a noun because everything has its own name which differentiates it from uh, other things like Muhammad, Shajara, Baytun, and so on. The definition of uh, al-fa'l, which is verb, is a word that indicates a meaning uh, in of itself and is linked to one of the three tenses, uh, past, present, and future. This means that the verb signifies the occurrence of an action at uh, a particular time. In other words, Every verb is a movement because verbs indicate movement. Uh, for example, kataba, yaktubu, uktub, kharaja, yakhruju, ukhruj. There is no verb without movement. The, the definition of harf, participle, is a word that indicates uh, meaning in something else. So this means that the participle does not have meaning within itself. In, a, in another word, it is not a thing or a movement. For example, ila, min. It doesn't have a meaning. Uh, within itself, it will only have a meaning if we add another word to it. Inshallah, when we come to uh, the, the signs of uh, the words, the, uh, the signs of nouns, the signs of uh, verbs, the signs of participle, I will go. We will go through inshallah some some participles, and how uh, you can see how the meaning is. Uh, they will have a meaning when we add to them another word. The rule to memorize of this lesson. Arabic language is made up of three uh, type of words, uh, verbs, uh, nouns, verbs, and participle. Uh, until next time, subhanakallah, bihamdik, shadu Allah, ilaha illa, and astaghfiruka wa atubu